Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we are going to be answering is, what's in the box in regard to this bad boy, the hot new Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion box set, the new introductory version of Gloomhaven with a much more accessible price point and simpler, easier to reward rules and better onboarding. No, I have not played this game. I have not seen what's inside it, but I am well experienced in Gloomhaven. If you head over to youtube.com slash tabletop bellhop, you can find a series of actual play videos where myself, my wife, and our friends Kat and Tori have played through a ton of Gloomhaven scenarios. You can also find my content at tabletopbellhop.com. That's the main hub where you'll find everything. So we're going to dive right into this. So one of the first things I do have to show before I go into the box is that when you get it, it doesn't all fit. You'll note that the lid does not actually fit on the box and it comes that way. I have to assume once you punch the cardboard that you'll actually get um, the box lid will shut, but we'll find out. I am not going to punch this game today. I'm just going to open it up and show you what's inside. So I'm going to start by removing the shrink. This is one heavy box, I gotta say. Okay, it's nowhere compared to the original Gloomhaven, but this is a, a significantly, there's some weight here. It says, a fully cooperative fantasy campaign adventure. Now, Gloomhaven is currently, according to at least BoardGameGeek.com, the number one game in the world. I expect this to catch up. I gotta say, right there, nice start. A, a what to do, a welcome to Gloomhaven. Stop, read this before anything else. I love seeing a read me first in any box set, whether it's an RPG box set or a board game box set. Something that tells me what to do with what's in the rest of this box. That's fantastic. So this is telling you that below the sheet in the box are four books and a map and so on. It says there's punch boards. It basically gives you a whole thing. There's going to be a plastic tray in here. It's initiative order tokens, all kinds of stuff here. Nice, clear, easy to read. Two-sided. This is also a great way to show off the contents of the game. Uh, you will note there is a watch it play. That's Rodney Smith has done a how to play this game video as well. And there's a nice QR code to that. Big thumbs up for everything Rodney does. So moving on without reading that. Normally I should sit and read through this, right? But I'm not going to do that. We're just going to dive in. Uh, so the first thing we have is the learn to play guide. This is still, now the original Gloomhaven rule book is 45 pages long. We're going to just jump to the end and see how much they sim They simplified it down to 31 pages. That is still not a thin book. I would hope, though, that it's a little more clear and easier to explain. One of the things that we have done, if you go to YouTube, is you can also find our Gloomhaven FAQ, because those 45 pages are sure enough confusing to many people. So we have the scenario rules. There is an index. That's always excellent to see. I love um, the layout here. This is really well done for showing your basic setup, showing to even have the tray on the side, where to keep everything. Very clear looking rules. I will admit Gloomhaven's gone through four printings now. I would hope that Cephala Fair Games and Isaac have, have learned some things and taken advantage of feedback. Now, one of the brilliant things in Gloomhaven is that it's a hand management game where you play two cards each round and you're going to do the top action off one card and the bottom action off another. Usually top actions are attacks and the bottoms are moves, but not always. The basic system here is the same. Uh, you also have a deck of... Um, Modifiers, this basically replaces what you'd normally see as a die in a role-playing game, like a, a D20 in Dungeons & Dragons. Instead, you have a modifier deck, which can change as your character level up. Um, looks like the number of conditions are greatly simplified from the original Gloomhaven. There's only four here. The original has significantly more. Uh, we have the movement rules, the rules for monster focus. So unlike many of these adventure style games this is purely cooperative there's no dungeon master there's no keeper there's no one that plays the bad guys the bad guys all work through an ai based system so this says what to do when a scenario is complete you've got scenario rules or what to do when you're doing scenario two um new action mechanics so there's a scenario one so you don't even have to learn all the rules to start playing so you only have to learn the first 13 pages to dive right in and at least play through the first scenario Sorry, 12 pages, because 13 would be scenario one complete. And then you play scenario 
the next scenario. When you finish that, you're going to add in some more rules. So that is significantly better onboarding than we saw in the original Gloomhaven. Because the first scenario in Gloomhaven is hard. And it is enough that I've seen it scare people away. So then we're done at the end of scenario two. So that's nice. You don't have to learn this whole book at once. That's significant. So it looks like eventually you're going to get to the city and start buying items and so on. Great looking book. Uh, just enough artwork to keep it interesting. We've got city cards. Nice. Scenario four rules. So all the way, we're onboarding all the way to scenario four, and then they're adding new stuff into, into it at scenario four, which are the party goals, the battle goals. And then we go to scenario four complete, and we move on. So it looks like the first scenario five complete. So the first five scenarios are all part of the onboarding process. Just teaching you how to play the game and go through everything. Very nice. And then a final set of rules in the back. I dig it. That looks way less intimidating than the original Gloomhaven. So now we move on to the glossary. It says, stop. If you're opening this box for the first time, you weren't how, weren't how to play first. So this is um, something we've seen in Fantasy Flight games where they're putting the actual rules in a separate booklet. So the how to play is there. But then when you're playing and you're like, wait, wait, what's, what's it mean by character? You can look it up in the book and go, oh, that's what it means by character. Or what, what do, wait, how do you set difficulty level again? Well, you're going to open up this book and find the difficulty level. Or what's a curse do? Well, you open up this book and look up curse. So basically, the only thing you should need once you're playing is this book to be able to reference anything. So this is, this is a significant number of terms. We are looking at, we're over 25 pages at this point. Wow. So we are looking at 31 pages, including a bunch of appendices, component integration, uh, your full list of components, monster turns. So this is some of the summary. So one of the things that happens a lot in Gloomhaven is people play the, the monsters wrong. So it's good to see a whole ton of examples on how to run through monsters. Again, I'm not going to go page by page like I did the last one. So you got a glossary and then a bunch of... Um, Basically like an FAQ in the back here. Then we get to something I was really excited to see. This is the, I don't know, a supplemental scenario book. I don't know how that's different than the scenario book. So one of the things that's changed here is in the original game, everything is tiles. And you build the dungeon each time. Well, here, your dungeon's in the book. So this is similar to games like Mice and Mystics. Um, or sorry, Mice and Mystics didn't do it. Um, Stuff Fables. Uh, what I am a little disappointed with is, I don't know if you can see that, that is a badly worked book. So I'm a little bummed getting my game like that, especially when this is the game board. That kind of stinks that i got to play on a rough. So I don't know what's with the supplemental scenario book. It looks like maybe these somehow go with the rest of the scenario book, possibly going at the end of the map. But yeah, the fact my... The book's a little warped. is a little disappointing. I'm hoping just putting this under something heavy, which I happen to have a copy of the original Gloomhaven, so that'll work. Might help that out a bit. So let's move on to the actual scenario book, which is what I'm even more interested in seeing. This is not warped, which is good to see. This is perfectly fine. Um, it's thinner paper quality than I would have expected. Like, these are, this is just paper. I expected, like, cart. Like a little bit more cardstock. Um, what I do dig is the maps look a little more 3D. So instead of the overlay tiles, what I like about this is the artwork for whatever this is kind of spreads out into the map. It looks a little nicer. Um, what I personally like to do is throw down 3D scenery on top of my Gloomhaven tiles. It looks like I'm going to need a whole set of new scenery for this booklet. Um, it shows exactly where the monsters spawn. That's a nice way to do it. And they changed the symbols for showing how many show up and which level based on the number of players. This is a lot clearer than the original game. So I don't want to spoil much, so I'm just going to flip through this just to show off a bit of the artwork. I'm going to grab a random scenario in the middle of the book to show off. There you got like a tavern brawl. Looks fantastic. Really impressed by the look of that. Uh, Gloomhaven it has and always will be a legacy game, so you are going to make changes to the game as you play. I have to assume there's going to be a map in here, and here are stickers where we can unlock sites to explore. Not nearly as many stickers as the base game, but there's still a significant number here. We're looking at 25 things to unlock. We have tokens to represent a variety of things. So you have coins. Every time you defeat a monster, he drops a coin. You pick up coins. You can spend money in the city. Uh, these are for tracking damage. These are traps that will be part of some of the, um, the scenarios. We have more traps. We have gas bombs. Um, 
This is a little bit disappointing. These are, there are six elements in Gloomhaven. They're magical elements, and doing certain actions will infuse the area with that element, and that'll allow you to use different abilities. In the actual game, these are nice uh, wooden tokens. Here, they're only cardboard. But you know what? I've got the original game, so I don't mind. Um, more chest tokens. These are all for the status effects to show if someone's poisoned or so on. Then we get to the monsters. Now, one of the things everyone wishes was in Gloomhaven is miniatures, but I get why they didn't, because including this many miniatures would make the game way too expensive. So Gloomhaven has always used standees. What's interesting here is I am seeing duplication from the base game. I was kind of hoping this would be all new monsters, but I have definitely seen these before, and I've seen those before, and I've seen these before. So there is some overlap in the monster types. Uh, these would be boss monsters you'd have to fight in some of the scenarios. And again, we have new monsters. So these two are old monster types. These are new. Uh, this is the board for tracking those elements I was talking about. And we have some more monsters. Let's see, again, if these were all miniatures, this would be like a $200 game at least. Looks like everything on here is new. No, these are old. This is a new terrain type I don't recognize. or are to represent boulders. Uh, these would be for mission targets. These I've never seen. From what I saw in the rulebook, there's something with initiative. So this is a new new component. Well, then we get to the map. Okay, I gotta say the map's nice. The map is a board, a mounted board, and it's glossy. And it looks like the whole game, this whole story is gonna take place in Gloomhaven, because that is the map of Gloomhaven, which is a blown out from the original game. So all your stickers are gonna go in here as you discover things in the city of Gloomhaven. Then we get to the fun stuff. I love this. There is, like, like I don't have to buy a box insert. That is one of the biggest complaints about the original Gloomhaven, is that you buy the game, and then you spend another $80 on a wooden box insert, or $50 on a, on a foam core one, included box insert. Props. Thank you for that, Cephalo Fair. Uh, so here, we have the dials. These are the same as in the base game for tracking your um, gold and XP. There's going to be one for each of the characters. We have a tray holder. It's nice. I, I had no complaints here. Plastic tray holder. Then we have unlockables. So these are the four character types that I think you start with at the start of the game. And then we have some of these. I am obviously not going to open any of these. I have no idea what's in A, but A is something you would eventually unlock. To go with it, you're going to have character box boxes to go with it. So there are only four characters in this particular uh, set, it looks like. So it looks like you unlock all four of the characters right at the beginning of the game. These are going to have your character contents. Again, I am not going to open these because some people will consider that spoilers, so I don't want to give anything away. Note, these aren't sealed, so technically it's open information. But you know, if you really want to see the different characters, you can easily go on the web and search up Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion Axe, and you'll find out everything that's in here. I don't want to spoil that for anyone, though, just in case. So we're going to put these back in. We have a number of standees for the monsters. White standees are regulars, yellows are elites. We have a pack of city cards. So there are no road events, which is interesting. It makes sense because the only map we had was of Gloomhaven. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, so I'm not even going to open this up. What you have is you're going to have a bit of a story on the front. And it's something that happened in the town of Gloomhaven. And you're going to get presented with a choice. And then your party as a whole is going to choose one of the two options. Then you're going to flip the card, and you're going to read off the options and see what happens. Some good things, some bad things. In general, most city events were positive and help out your party. Then we move on to these are the um, battle goals. So I will read off one of these, but again, I'm not going to open up this package. There's no reason for it. So this is Acrobat. Lose a card to negate suffering five or more damage. So this is a little different than the original game. There were no spend a card things to get anything. So actually, I am going to crack this open just to take a look. Because these sure look like battle goals to me, but that does not play out like any battle goal in the original Gloomhaven. So these are in resealable packages, which is a nice touch. So here's another one. Challenger. Never leave a hex adjacent to a monster. See, that's different. That's 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 a typical battle goal. This one, Acrobat's different. Lose a card to negate five damage. Oh, okay, yes. Because you can always spend a card to negate damage. So you're going to spend a card to negate at least five. So yeah, battle goal, same. These are different than I've ever seen in Gloomhaven. Sadis, kill five or more monsters. Straggler, never short rest. Oof, some rough ones. These are new checkpoints, check marks. You get enough check marks, you get to get a special ability for your character, an improvement for your character. 
seal that back up. Then we go on to the equipment deck. Um, these are all going to be numbered because you'll have uh, the store shop will have so many of these for sale and then you'll add more as the game goes on. Here's an example of an item. Um, actually, the glare's not bad. I'll just keep it in there. You can see the name of the item, a nice picture for it, the cost and what it does in the game, and then where it goes. And then if you have to tap it, or sorry, I shouldn't use tap, if you have to um, put it so you can't use it until you rest or if you get rid of it at the end of the round. Again, I'm not going to go through this deck because I don't want to spoil anything, but I will note that is an item that is in the original Gloomhaven. So don't know if there are any new items in here. Then we move on to the combat modifier decks. There's going to be one of these for all four of the characters and one for the monsters. They're going to say up to plus two and so on. Uh, this one in particular is for the monster deck. It has an M on it. Again, I'm not going to open that up. Then we have the actual monster cards. So each monster type is going to have its own deck of these. And this determines what the monster does each round. You're going to flip one of these every round to see what the monster does. For example, the screaming shot is going to, whatever this monster is, does a screaming shot, which is going to push all targets and attack for a certain amount of damage. Uh, this blue box at the bottom says shuffle this deck at the end of the round. So that is a nice touch. So this is something right from Gloomhaven. Any card that had that symbol, when it came up, it told you to shuffle. They've added a nice bright blue reminder. That's a nice touch, just to remind you to shuffle the deck. I like that. We have baggies. Always a fan of baggies. Way to organize the bits. Uh, we have... I don't know. This is Monster Attack Modifiers. Curse and Bless cards. So this must be some way to organize the contents of the box. Some kind of divider. Uh, because we also have unavailable items and available items. So this is a way some dividers... Uh, same thing here. So we have new events and encountered events. So that's how to organize some of the cards in here. Then we have the monster cards. So this is a blood tumor. Um, these look overly complicated, but what happens is you, for every monster in the game, slide one of these into here, and then you just turn it to the appropriate level. And you know what? I'll do it quickly. So when I am fighting... A blood tumor for the first time, you look at the scenario level, and if I'm playing at scenario level 1, I would turn it here. If I was playing at scenario level 7, I would turn it here. And then you slide it into this card, and then you would only see the stats for the appropriate level of monster. This is something straight from the original Gloomhaven. Now, I will admit, our group has tossed these out and no longer use them because we use the excellent Gloomhaven Helper app, which is something I strongly recommend anyone that plays Gloomhaven, including this edition, check out. So that's it, we have a bunch of sleeves here. So without spoiling anything, that is the contents of Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. I am really surprised there's only four characters. I, I, I have to assume there's no rules for retirement in this game. You don't retire your characters and um, create new ones, which is a significant change from the original Gloomhaven, if that's true. There are a number of unlockables. Again, these would be the miniatures. And what I will do here is if anyone is worried about spoilers, you can turn the video off now. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Bomb Heart and the Bomb Heart Miniature. So this is your fair warning. If you are taking off, thank you for joining us. If you dig this video and you appreciate what we do, head over to patreon.com slash tabletop bellhop. Consider tipping your bellhop. For the rest of you, whoever's sticking around, I am going to open up the Heart Bomb so we can get to see what's in these two boxes. So we're going to start off with the miniature for the Heart Bomb. It's tiny. It is very tiny. I don't know how well my... There we go. Also worth knowing there's no punch board in here, but that might be in here. So we have the miniature for Heart Bomb. Which I probably should have opened up this first to figure out what Heart Bomb was. So inside each of these character packs, you're going to get the same type of thing. We're going to take these. Oh, I like this. I like this. All right. Let's move the box out of the way so we can see what we got. So I just kind of dumped this out here. And I got to say right away, I love this. A big, nice, big halt. Do not open this pack until your character reaches level five. I like that. That's impressive. So now I definitely don't want to spoil anything. So I'm not going to open this any further. Um, at that time, flip this over and read the back for further instructions. So there's a pack you don't open until level five. 
And then I have another. Halt! Halt! Do not open this pack until you are directed to do so. These cards are added to your attack modifier deck as your character becomes more powerful, so you won't need them at the start of the campaign. So these are going to be based on the perks. So as you level up your character and get perks, you're going to be able to modify those, which I'll show you those on the character sheet. So this is your standard Gloomhaven character sheet. This looks the same as all the ones in the base game, which means you can probably play these characters in it. And the list of perks are over here. So once you complete three battle goals, you'll get to unlock one of these perks. So for example, the top perk here is remove four plus zero cards, which makes your combat deck better. Or this one here is replace a plus zero card with a plus two muddle card. So those muddle cards would be in this pack. Then what we have here is, so this is the Demonologist, and we get to see what it actually looks like. That is a really nice piece of art. And we have a character story on the background. It's a Quattro Demonologist. I'm not going to read the story. That's up to you to discover on your own. And then we have the cards. So I am going to crack this open because this wasn't a uh, warning. Do not open. Uh, you do have a summary card. Nice touch. Again, nice blue, hey, heads up, there's something special here. So this says, Attack Muddle. So, and it literally explains what the card does. So if you don't know what Attack Muddle does, it says, One adjacent enemy suffers three damage plus modifier and gains disadvantage on its attacks until the end of its next turn. So it literally is explaining the cards right on the cards. That's a nice touch. So I kind of wonder why they didn't do this right from the start. So every card's got that. Um, it looks like they only did it for the level... I don't know. They used to be level 1, 2, and 3. These say A. So they've changed something here. Sorry, I'm doing this off camera. So all of the A cards literally explain... Then so there's some B cards as well. Literally explain step by step what the cards do. Then once you get into the level 1 cards, I have to assume they assume you know what you're doing and they look like standard Gloomhaven cards. So you have level one, level two cards, and so on. The cards look very similar to the original Gloomhaven. You have the top and the bottom. Again, every time you do an action, you're going to pick a top and a bottom. Um, depending on your character class, you're going to be able to hold a set number of cards. This character can only hold nine cards. So before each scenario, they're going to go through this deck and only pick nine of the cards to use. Which is a huge part of the strategy of Gloomhaven. So we're going to slide this back into its little resealable pouch, which again, I dig the resealable. Thank you for that. Cephalofair. You have some counters. Uh, these are used for anything and everything. So you might have a card where you have to put a counter on it, and then every time you use it, the counter slides down. You might have to mark an enemy or so on. It's all going to be very dependent on the class. And I guess the deck of modifiers that was in there is just for the monsters, because it seems every character actually has their own deck of cards in this set. So instead of just having a generic set for players 1, 2, 3, 4, each character class starts with its own deck. And that's it. That's what we get in with the, the Quattro Demonologist, the first of four characters. So again, I'm not going to open up the rest. I'll leave those for you to discover on your own. We're just going to throw everything back in the box. I do love this halt. Don't even look at these yet. You haven't earned them. Don't bother. You're just going to get wishful thinking and... Be depressed, you can't use these abilities. And what we did when we played is we punched these out and put them in with the miniature. Just so they don't get lost in this little box. And we're going to slide the character card back in. Throw this in here. We're going to throw this character class box back here. Then we're going to throw all this back on top. Now, again, my copy's not going to shut because I haven't punched anything. I would have to punch all that cardboard, then this should shut. So there you have it. That is what you get in Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion from Cephalofair Games, the new entry point for Gloomhaven. Everything I saw there makes it look like such a better onboarding experience than the original game. You have powers for the characters that fully explain how the cards work before you get into the more complex abilities. You've got intro scenarios. You don't have to worry about road events. You don't have to worry about road ti or map tiles. There's less status effects. Um, everything just looked like a, a great way to introduce you to the world of Gloomhaven while not diminishing it at any way. Like this still looks like a nice, hefty, thick, get lots of plays out of it box. 
Two huge surprises for me opening this up was that it comes with a box insert. I had no idea that was going to be in here, and that is awesome. One of the biggest complaints about Gloomhaven is trying to organize all of the components, and pretty much everyone that plays the game goes out and spends extra money having to buy a third-party box insert. It's great that Cephalo Fair has seen that and has included one in the game. Too bad for Broken Token and um, Meeple Realty and all those companies that make money off that, but good for us, the consumers. I was also really surprised that there's only four characters in here. I didn't realize that there's no characters to unlock in Jaws of the Lion. It looks like you have your four starter characters and that's it. So that was a surprise to me. One of the big parts of the original Gloomhaven is everyone has a personal quest. And when they complete it, they can retire their character and start a new character. Well, that doesn't seem to exist in here. That said, there does look like there's about seven or eight, six or seven, six or seven different boxes of stuff you can unlock. So there are still unlockables and there's lots of new scenarios to put on the map and stuff like that. So there's still those legacy game elements. It's just no character retirement and new character creation the other great part for onboarding was looking through the rules it looks like the first five scenarios slowly introduce the rules so the rules are set up so it's like read up to this point play scenario one okay read now that you played scenario one read up to this point play scenario two and so on all the way up to scenario five so again great to see component quality is great lots of new monsters in here and some repeats uh, standees look the same. The components are pretty much the same as the original Gloomhaven uh, with some better clarification and rules text on them. So that's it. That is a Mo Tuzno tabletop bellhop look at Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Looking forward to checking this one out. We do live stream Gloomhavens on Friday nights when we're no longer in the world of COVID. Now that we have this, it may be something that we start up again. So be sure to check out our, our Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash tabletop bellhop. Maybe you get to see us playing some Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion live. And you can see lots of Gloomhaven actual plays at our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash tabletop bellhop. Uh, that's it for me. Everyone, have a good night and game on.